Hi, I'm Adolph Oliver, and this video clip is about finding the slope of a graph line uh, when we're given two points on the line. It's another method to be able to find slope with. So uh, here's the idea. What we want to do is we're going to have uh, an XY uh, grid like this. And uh, we got a line going through here, say like this. And there'll be a couple of points on this line that are given to us. And we'll call this point number one. And we'll say then that the coordinates here are x1, y1. <clears throat> and this is point number two up here. And we'll say the coordinates here are x2 and y2. Well, how we can find the distance between these two points right here is to do something like we did just in the last section. We make our triangle underneath this, and we note then that the run here is a difference in the x's, so it is simply x2, this value, minus x1, x2 minus x1, and the rise here is the difference in the y values, y2 minus y1. So we can see where we're going to get this equation that we're going to give you now, this relationship. Remember, of course, we said that slope from the engineers equals rise over run. Well, what we found out here is that the rise is the difference in the y values, y2 minus y1, and the run that's dividing it is a difference in the x values, x2 minus x1. So here's the relationship we're going to use given two points. We won't bother making the graph and drawing the triangle and doing all of that. Uh, since we know what these points are, well, then we can simply take <coughs> the difference in the y's divided by the difference in the x's. Well, let's take a look at how this works. It's a fairly simple thing to do. <coughs> okay, here's our first example we can take a look at. We're given here two points. Here they are, 9, comma 8, x and y and negative 16 and 7, x and y. These are points on the graph line, and all we need to do then is make use of our formulation that we just had, namely that the slope equals y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. Well, <coughs> label these to make sure you don't goof anything up. We'll take this first point to be our point number one, x sub one, y sub one. The second point will be our point number two, x sub two, y sub two. Now, it doesn't make any difference which point we take number one and two, but once we decide how we're going to do it, we definitely want to label them. They're both points on the same line, so whichever order you take them in, or any other point you use on that line, you're going to get the same slope because it's from that one line. Well, here's one of the best ways to work with this. Take now and break this fraction up into, we got y2, so I'll make a hole for y2, minus, now you see this minus in the formulation right here, that's this one right here, and then I make a hole for y1. I do the same thing downstairs. Make a hole for x2, here's the minus, it's the minus downstairs, and here's the hole for x1. thing that you want to make sure is you get everything in the right order here. So, y2, 7. y1, negative 8. x2, negative 16. x1 goes in this hole here. It is 9. Now, any number that you have more than one sign in front of, be sure to use the rules to combine the signs, and that happens upstairs in front of the 8. These two minuses become a plus. 
So here we go. What we end up with upstairs, 7 plus 8 is 15. Downstairs, I have negative 16 minus 9 is negative 25. Now we can do two things for the final answer on this. First, reduce the fraction. Remember, we always have a standing rule that we must always reduce fractions when we can. 5 goes into 15 three times. 5 goes into 25, 5. And then we have this 1 minus here, which makes the slope negative. So we know if we were to graph this, it'd be going downhill. And so put that minus right out in front. That's the best place for it in the final answer. And then 3 fifths. So here it is. By using slope equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, we come up with the slope of this line being negative 3 fifths without having ever to graft it. <laughs> Okay, here's another example. Same idea. Find the slope of the line going through two points. Well, when we're given two points, we know it's easy to do. Uh, while we're here, let's just make this point number one, x sub one, y sub one, x sub two, and y sub two. Remember, you could number them the other way if you wanted. You'd get the same slope. So I just take the first guy I run into as point one, and the second one is point two. Now, once again, m, which we're going to use for slope in the future, but I'll remind you that's just slope here. Slope equals rise over run, which means the rise are the y guys. So y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now, the first thing you do with this is make your holes for all the x and y values. So here's a hole for the first y2. The minus is in the formula right here. Here it is. And here's a hole for the y1. Remember, the x's and y's can have their own plus and minuses, but this minus in between is from the formula, and we definitely need it. Downstairs, the same thing. Hole for x2. Here's a minus that's in the formula, and a hole for x1. Okay, now you got to be careful getting everybody in the right spot here. Y2 is the top left value. It is negative 17. Y1 is the top right value. It is 19. Okay, now, downstairs, X2 is the bottom left guy. It's 4. X1 is the bottom right guy. It is negative 2. Well, okay, here we go. First thing we notice is the 2 has two minuses in front, so we have to combine it to a plus. The other guys upstairs all have single signs. Well, let's see. What do we have here? Negative 17 minus 19. They're both negative, and the total on that is negative 36. Okay. Downstairs, we have 4 plus 2. That's 6. Okay, well, once again, if you can do any reducing on the fraction here, definitely do it. And we can reduce a 6 top and bottom. Here we go. The downstairs is 1, so that means the answer is just the upstairs. So the slope on this turns out to be negative 6. If we were to draw this graph line, it would be going downhill to the right. And negative 6 is more than negative 1. Remember, negative 1 would be at 45 Negative 6 would be steeper, something like that. Well, now, what we can do, of course, is have some of the special cases we talked about a little bit earlier here. And let's show you where they pop up. Uh, you can recognize these uh, after you've uh, worked them for a while. But let's say we just consider this to be another one of our find the slope of the line going through the two points. And so here they are. And again, I'll just take this as x1, y1, and this is x2 and y2. And then, of course, our slope equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And what I'm going to do, as always, is make my double set of holes 
Here's a hole for y2 and then minus the hole for y1. Downstairs a hole for x2, the minus, and the hole for x1. Okay, as always, be careful getting everybody in the right spot. Y2 is 4. Y1 goes in the upper right. Y1 is 7. Okay, downstairs. X2 is 17. And X1 is 17. Well, okay, there's no signs to combine. Let's see what we end up with. 4 minus 7 is negative 3, but look what we have downstairs. 17 minus 17 equals 0. Now, hopefully you remember that whenever you have a 0 downstairs, the value of the fraction is undefined. Okay, and so that simply means that uh, our slope here, m itself, is undefined. You could, of course, say that it equaled uh, zero, or not zero, but infinity if you wanted. So here's the key. Uh, if we were to graph this, it would have the same x values, and it would be aligned, and it would be going straight up in the air. Well, of course, we know from earlier on that any vertical line on our xy graph has a slope that's undefined, and here's how you find it when you... Uh, do the old uh, slope calculations given two points, you end up with the denominator being zero. Okay, you can also have a case where the y values are the same, and that would be a flat line, and the zero would be upstairs, and you'd have some number other than zero down. So all the standard things that we've talked about can happen here again when you have two points. Just remember, if you get a zero downstairs, then that means the graph line is vertical and the slope is undefined.